بسم بسم اللہ اللہ الرحمن محمد الطاہرین رب صدری امری من لسانی ربی سدنی علمن. السلام علیکم ایوری ون اینڈ ویری بلیسڈ عید مبارک ٹو ایوری ون ایز وی ریپ اپ دا بلیسڈ منتھ آف رمدان وی مے بی فیلنگ اے مکس آف ایموشنس اے ٹنج آف سیڈنیس ایٹ دی اینڈنگ آف دا منتھ آف بلیسنگس مرسی اینڈ فگیٹنیس وی مے ہیو اے سینس آف ریلیف دیٹ وی ور ایبل ٹو فاسٹ اینڈ پرے اینڈ یس دیٹ ناؤ وی کین ایٹ اگین اینڈ مے بی سم ریگریٹ that we did not or could not do more during the blessed minutes and hours of the sacred month of Allah when we were his guests. Many of us have been deeply impacted by the news from Palestine and our sense of helplessness to stop the atrocities. Please let us remind ourselves that we have the huge weapon of dua at our disposal. And though the month of Ramadan may be coming to an end, and our eyes may not water quite so much at every suhoor and iftar thinking of our brothers and sisters starving while we are blessed with an abundance of food and drink at our tables, we cannot and must not forget that we have an ongoing duty to do what little we can, which includes turning to him in prayer to ease their plight and to grant them peace and freedom, inshallah, ameen. No matter what level of closeness and spirituality we attained during this month, we may be wondering on how to make it stay with us, with us a little bit longer. For many of us, this is the only time in the year when we change the focus of our attention from worldly matters and at least cast a glance at matters of the spirit. During the rest of the year, although we may profess love and belief in Allah, We may think of him or call on him only in times of distress and rarely find time to turn to him in extra prayer or gratitude. During this awesome month, however, we have tasted of the divine banquet of mercy. We have developed some good habits and we may feel a little bit forlorn that we will lose the sense of spirituality again until next year. It does not have to be this way. As we approach Eid, let us remind ourselves that the Eid celebration is a celebration of our spirituality. It is a celebration of the breaking of bad habits as much as of fasting and of the instilling of good ones. So it is a good idea to reflect on some tiny steps that we can take to maintain the spirit of Ramadan, to keep it alive so that the spiritual gains we have achieved are not lost. and that we may start next Ramadan, inshallah, on a slightly higher plane of spirituality than we did this year. Just as gains in health are only maintained if one continues with some good habits after a time at a health spa, for example, the spiritual gains achieved during the spiritual spa time can be maintained with some simple baby steps. So here are some actions that we took during this month. Let's reflect on them. Let's reflect on how they helped us nurture our spiritual bond to him and find some simple ways that we can continue these practices. First of all, establishing Salah. Ramadan is a time when we are most conscious of Salah and its timing, especially during Fajr and Maghrib prayer. Regular and timely prayer, we know, is the most basic and vital way to maintain that connection to him on an ongoing basis. It's designed by the Almighty to be an intentional and consistent non-attachment from the world on a regular basis and an invitation to turn towards, to connect to the source at regular intervals to fuel our spirit. We are invited in the Quran to establish salah, aqeem as salah, we are told, not just to pray the occasional salah. This means that this act of worship has to be a pillar of our life, a structure of our existence. And so how can we take baby steps to maintain this? We can maintain a make commitment to start praying at least one salah, if not all, exactly on time every day. Fajr is a wonderful time to do this before the, the demands of the day are upon us. And secondly, we can adorn the salah by adding recommended actions to the basic prayer. We can start with something small and do it consistently before the adding before adding the next piece. 
We are told that Allah loves it when we sit on the prayer mat just for a few moments beyond the prayer time and connect with him, pray to him, supplicate. Secondly, reading the Quran. To succeed in any area of life, the first step is knowledge about the rules that govern that area. We do not expect to excel at academics or in the workplace without reading the texts that govern the particular field. We read manuals and we read textbooks. Similarly, we cannot expect to succeed in this world, get to know the system of cause and effect, to know ourselves or to figure out how to achieve ultimate success in the hereafter without looking at the manual gifted to us by the creator of the system, which is the Quran. Although we may have spent much time in recitation during the month of Ramadan, an ongoing relationship with the Quran necessitates it is necessary for understanding, contemplation, and action. Only with understanding and reflection can we use the wisdom of the book to improve our life here and beyond. So what are some of the baby steps we can take? We can read and reflect on one verse of the Quran every day. Once again, it is important to start small so that it is sustainable in the long term. Even if we do one verse a day, it means we will have read, understood, and inshallah implemented 365 verses at this time next year. Small steps do add up. Secondly, when reading a verse which calls to action, make a note of how you could respond through action. If you acted on this verse, what would you be doing differently? What could you do more of, less of? And of course, please join our community of Quran study where we do exactly this. If you are hearing this or you are getting a newsletter, you're already part of it. If you would like someone else to join, please send them a link so that they can also join us. Thirdly, giving generously. Many of us plan our yearly giving, sadaqa, khum, zakat during the month of Ramadan. We actively seek out those who are needy, we look for causes and we reach out to them with giving in cash and in kind. And we experience the deep sense of gratitude, humility, and sense of satisfaction that comes from reaching out and helping fellow human beings. It reminds us of the human connection that we share, of our responsibility to the whole, and the necessity of enabling the flow of wealth rather than the hoarding of it. Throughout the Quran, the act of giving zakat, which literally means to purify wealth through giving, comes hand in hand with establishing prayer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly reminds us that our relationship to him through prayer is complemented by a relationship to humanity through giving. So baby steps that we can take. Firstly, becoming aware of the need all around us. Sometimes when we are living in the West, we live under this illusion that basic needs of human beings are taken care of. And this is simply not the case. For example, in Canada, which has a you know better social system than most people, people do not have a right to food and they do not have a right to housing. They have a right to healthcare and to um, schooling, for example, but the need for food and clothing, uh, for food and shelter is not met by the government. So when the urge to giving strikes, we do not second guess it or talk ourselves out of it. We take action to meet the need of people in whatever way we can, even if it is small. And we could start a small but regular contribution to a cause. By automating it, it ensures that it will happen even if we forget or even if we are not inspired or motivated or even when we feel strapped for resources ourselves. Fourthly, dua. One of the most special things about Ramadan is the moments of connection to him through dua or supplication. The process of turning to him and asking from him enriches us beyond measure and gives us spiritual strength. Whereas Sharia applies to our outward actions and his job is to regulate human action in, or in order to create the basis of social justice, dua is the training of the heart the training of the heart to love the creator, to experience his love and to understand that the more you love him, the more personal relationship you have with him, the more you understand that the laws of Sharia are there to help you reach your full potential. 
The duas that we have been reciting during this month all emphasize the personal quality of Allah's relationship with us and with and his all-encompassing love. Dua is such a vital practice to cultivate spirituality and nurture our connection to him. So what are some baby steps we can take? Look through a compilation of du'as such as the Sahih Fais Sajadiyya, the du'as of Imam Ali, or any number of du'as that have been handed out to us. Pick one to begin with that calls out to you. Pick a longer du'a and spend a few moments after Salah reading and reflecting on just a few lines at a time. Please do not get into this habit that you have to finish it when you once you start it. You know, that just leads us to do it once and then tell ourselves we don't have the time and not do it again. Feel free to interact with the du'a. Make notes for your reflection. Mark passages that are your favorites that speak to you. Remember those passages in your day. You know, endeavor to use them to communicate with him at various times of the day, even when you're not sitting uh, on the prayer mat. There are such, so many beautiful verses. You know, one of that, uh, some of them that comes to mind is, um, help me pass the time for the work that you have created me. You know, help uh, end, oh Allah, end my life term with your pardon. Oh Allah, help me speak with guidance, you know, things like that. Commit them to memory, use them often, whether you are on, on your prayer mat or off it. And fifthly and lastly, maintaining family relationships. So the month of Ramadan finds many of us trying to reach out to family by an invitation for iftar or sending foods and gifts. And as the Knights of Qadr approach, we are reminded about making amends with those members of our family whom we have issues with, through prayer and supplication, our hearts have become soft. Through closest to him, we begin to recognize the big picture. And we may be more amenable to forgive and overlook the small grievances that we may have been holding. While reflecting on the Quran, we are reminded to pardon people, to manage our anger, to repel evil with good, and to maintain relationships with our blood relations. We begin to recognize once again that he is happy with us if our human connections are in order. So what are some of the baby steps we can take? We can regularly reach out to long forgotten family members through a phone call, an email, a text or WhatsApp. Consider inviting family members to share meals with us or just to drop in or drop in to see them, even if the house is mess and even if your cooking is not perfect. You know, these are the, the things, the small things that stop us, the, the thing that we have to look good, that it has to be perfect. You know, when we do that, not only does it stop us from connecting with others, it also puts an additional burden on other people that they cannot invite us unless everything else is in order. So once we, you know, be a bit more forgiving of ourselves and of the state that a house might be and become comfortable with inviting people uh, to share in our chaos, uh, whatever level that might be in, we kind of open the door for others to do the same as well. So let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to continue the good deeds that we may have started during this month and to continue staying away from that which displeases him. And let us wrap up with an extract from Imam Sajjad's supplication in bidding farewell to the month of Ramadan. O Allah, with the passing of this month, make us pass forth from our offenses. With its departure, make us depart from our evil deeds and appoint us thereby amongst its most felicitous people, the most plentiful of them in portion and the fullest of them in share. O oh Allah, when any person observes this month as it should be observed, safeguards it as it should be safeguarded, attends to it bounds as they should be attended to, fears his misdeeds as they should be feared, or seeks nearest, nearness to you with any act of nearness seeking, nearness seeking which makes incumbent upon him your good pleasure and bends towards him your mercy, give to us the like of that from your wealth and bestow it upon us in multiples through your bounty, for your bounty to, does not diminish.
Your treasures do not decrease but overflow. The mines of your beneficence are not exhausted, and your giving is the bestowal full of delight. Amen. So thank you so much for joining me in this small effort to reflect on his word every day during the month of Ramadan and do what we can to live the Quran in our modern lives. So much gratitude and appreciation for your warm support and kindness, kind messages which really fuel me and keep me going. So please accept a warm Eid Mubarak from myself and my family to you and your loved ones. May our deeds be accepted May we be counted amongst his friends and may we all be gathered together under his protection, guidance and mercy always. Amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.